Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me at the back? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Uh, my name is Sam, and I work with Alfonso Labs. We work on television data. I specifically work on video AI and uh, applying vision algorithms to television videos. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, using CUDA and OpenCV and combining that to analyze uh, video and probably apply machine learning or vision algorithms that you want to. Uh, we'll be using a very simple example to do that. Uh, it's not a very complex problem. Uh, detecting scene transitions in a, in a, in a stream of video. That's, that's what we are going to use as a, as a demonstration uh, to apply CUDA and OpenCV. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about video encoding using FFmpeg to decode videos and eventually uh, use OpenCV to uh, analyze uh, video frames. So the, the algorithm that we're going to talk is uh, detecting scene transitions. So essentially, uh, the idea is to detect when does one scene change fr from a shot to the other. Uh, essentially, the algorithm is very simple. You compare the uh, pixel values of uh, subsequent frames to consecutive frames. And if the difference, uh, average of the difference is higher than some threshold, you declare that it's a transition. So it's a very basic algorithm. And the idea is, not, uh, is to use it to analyze uh, d the difference in uh, execution times when you execute it using the CPU and when you offload the computations to a GPU. So the first thing when you talk about video is a video codec. And it's basically some software that decompresses and incompresses, uh, compresses and decompresses digital video. A lot of people confuse video codec with the containers. Uh, but they are they're s s very different. And essentially, if you want to use uh, video frames, if you want to analyze video frames, you need to have some mechanism to decode video frames. And that's what video decoders are. So video decoding is, is basically you decompress uh, video from raw format and use it in your, an, in your analysis. Now, there are two types or two ways to do that. One is using a software decoder. A software decoder would essentially use the CPU cycles to perform the uh, uh, decompression. The other is to use a dedicated chipset or a dedicated hardware to essentially uh, handle the decoding part. Now, using hardware, of course, is, is better, not because it's faster, but simply because you free your CPU for doing something more useful. Uh, a lot of uh, hardware is uh, available. As NVIDIA has a lot of uh, hardware for video decoding. And NVIDIA, yeah. So NVIDIA GPUs, according to the NVIDIA website, NVIDIA GPUs contain hardware decoders, which can provide fully accelerated hardware decoding and encoding. Uh, but this is partially true. Uh, you need to be very, you need to spend a lot of money if you want uh, unlimited encoding sessions at a time, close to five hundred dollars if you want a GPU that good. But most of the GPUs support two encoding sessions in parallel, and a lot of, I think, around ten decoding sessions at a time. Uh, and NVIDIA provides a very uh, comprehensive and uh, video SDK, video codec SDK. Uh, a lot of people have tried to build uh, stuff on top of that, and uh, FFmpeg has support for using the NVIDIA video codec. And yeah, coming to FFmpeg, uh, a lot of people here would be aware of this. FFmpeg is basically an open source library to do anything with media. Transcoding, encoding, decoding, you can do almost anything using FFmpeg. Uh, it's written in C. Uh, the only thing is, if you want to use it with NVIDIA uh, codec, you need to build it from source, which is kind of tricky, but it should be pretty straightforward if you follow the docs. NVIDIA provides, it the, do uh, provides the docs there. Coming to the second part we have, that is CUDA. 
So uh, GPUs basically uh, have gained significance since we uh, people have started using machine learning, and they they, they found that GPUs can uh, accelerate computations tremendously, and that's when NVIDIA came out with its uh, uh, architecture, which can perform, uh, which can allow uh, a user to write partial code in GPU. So basically, you can have a function, you can have an application that is running on the CPU, but it can offload some functions to on the GPU. They're called kernel functions in, in, in CUDA's architecture. So you can provide, it, it basically provides a C extension or C++ extension, and you can uh, do, uh, uh, offload the heavy lifting, the heavy arithmetic to the GPU. And because GPUs are designed for parallel uh, processing, they'll hopefully uh, uh, compute it faster. Uh, OpenCV, OpenCV is a very popular and a very uh, widely used uh, free and open source library for vision. Uh, the OpenCV website claims that it has around 14,000 active users. Uh, it, it provides plugins in Python, Java, and C++. It also has bindings which allow you to uh, use the native hardware acceleration. And specifically, it allows you to use CUDA. So that, that's great for us. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's a slide missing, but yeah. <laughs> so basically, that slide talked about how CUDA helps you accelerate. Uh, so imagine if you have two vectors uh, with th 64 elements or, or some elements. Essentially, a CPU would process it sequentially, where, whereas a, G uh, a GPU would have a, a, an individual thread working on uh, each, each element of both the vectors. So essentially, a GPU does not speed up, but it uh, maximizes your throughput. I hope that makes sense. I <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, uh, using OpenCV with CUDA. So OpenCV, again, has bindings, as I said, and it, you have to, again, build it from source if you want to use it with CUDA. So it has a lot of uh, namespace, uh, not a lot of wrappers. And the, the problem is that if you want to use the decoder, the NVIDIA decoder for decoding video frames, you need to use it with FFmpeg, basically. So you need to have FFmpeg built f uh, for using GPU uh, to be using you know, video decoding with OpenCV. So basically, you the scene detection, right, we, we, we talked about it. It, it. it requires three things. It requires, the first step is essentially decoding the video to get individual frames. And then you need to uh, use, uh, you need to perform computations on each frame. So uh, let's see how, the, how, the, how that, that works. So basically, uh, you have OpenCV, uh, library which allows you so essentially you you decode and then basically you have two diff two frames which are subsequent frames and they are in hsv color space and you can offload your uh, pixel by pixel subtraction to the gpu and because gpu performs a computation on each pixel this essentially should be faster if you just use it if you just run it on the cpu uh, so these are some uh, functions that you can use. You can basically uh, perform a matrix subtraction. You can find the absolute sum of all the pixel values of a matrix. And the, the last step is basically just averaging across three different channels. And again, basically, a simple uh, matrix uh, is ba a video is basically a collection of images, and each image is essentially a matrix. Uh, and because matrices can individually be, uh, the, each pixel of matrix can, in, can be used to individually perform computations, you can use this, uh, you can use a GPU to speed it up, simply because you have different pixel points, and each pixel is independent of the other if you're performing a pixel by pixel comparison. Some experimental, uh, some experiments that I did, uh, 
again this uses uh, uh, a Tesla 1080 Ti that is the G NVIDIA GPU that I used. So, if you if you run your decoding uh, this basically is running the above algorithm on a 1 minute mp4 file again if you if you run uh, only the software decoder that is you decode on the CPU and then you run uh, your entire algorithm on the CPU it takes about 18 seconds but if you offload the decoding to the hardware and even execute your uh, pixel computation uh, pixel computations on a GPU it just takes two seconds so the speed up is is quite high oh. thank you and questions So you used um, a, a pre-existing file to do these computations, um, I, I understood. Yes. So is it also possible to, for example, do the same thing on a live stream, um, oh, coming I've in I've via camera or something like that? Yes, you, you can uh, do it on, uh, on using in a live stream on camera. So um, if I understood correctly, two seconds for the whole minute, in, um, that means uh, live analysis should be no problem performance-wise? Yes. Uh, I think the only uh, ca uh, catch there might be that you may not be able to use the OpenCV's existing libraries to decode uh, the frames on the uh, using the NVIDIA hardware. Uh, you might have to write some wrappers around that. I've not tried that, but you might need to s uh, write some wrappers or some code around that to use the uh, NVIDIA hardware. Yeah, it depends on the camera probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Have one that puts out H.264, that should be... Oh, that should be okay, I think. Yeah. Um, how much frames how much frames do you need to decide that the image have changed from one cent to the other? Again, that's, that's something that you can probably experiment and find out. But again, for, for the purpose of uh, this experiment that I did, I just compared to two subsequent frames. So the fr first frame is, of course, not useful, but the first and second, the second and third, like that. Uh, another question, please. Uh, if uh, in the case Sorry, when here, yeah, okay, uh, in the case uh, that you use FM. MPH, uh, yes. FM, I don't know, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, with CUDA bindings, do you leave the, the, uh, the, coding f the code frame into the uh, GPU memory or you go and get back the, uh, the, f uh, the frame to main memory and then you have to offload them, uh, ag it again to the, to the yeah. uh, yes. So very nice question. So, if you, if you see the second one, right, yes. software decoder with CUDA, yes. so that essentially uh, does the computation okay. in memory and then uh, uh, copies that to the GPU. So, the second one is what uh, you were asking. And the, mm. the last one, of course, does it on the GPU memory. Everything. Yeah, everything on the GPU memory. Thank you very much. Other questions? Yes. Hello. Um, just looking at those stats there, uh, it seems like you get more benefit from just doing the hardware code decode as opposed to software to code than your actual CUDA algorithm for scene change detection. Uh, you're actually missing a combination there. Like, what if you had just done hardware decode without the CUDA? Is it going to go from 18 seconds to four seconds? Um, I'm like, do you have any feel for like what the division of labor is there? Because it seems like you know, you, you, it seems like your algorithm is pretty cheap no matter what, you know, for the actual scene change detection. And the benefit that you're showing there is, is largely uh, just the difference between software decoding and hardware decoding, which, yeah, it's, gonna, it's obviously going to be faster. Uh, again, uh, that's possible, but uh, essentially, uh, if, you, if, you, if you just compare the first two stats, you see that there is, there is a, a gain even if you offload the pixel computations to, to the GPU. I've not tried hardware decoder without CUDA. I mean, essentially when you, when you, it, that would 
uh, be, I think that would be more expensive because you have to copy data back from the GPU to the CPU to perform the computations. So there'll be some overhead involved there. So if, 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 if you're using the GPU for decoding frames, you might as well just use it for, for you know, performing pixel computations and save that overhead. Do you have any idea what the what the division of labor is with it be, between I'm like what, how much of the savings is because of the hardware decoder versus just the fact that you're not doing, you know, uh, you're not using the memory bandwidth going back and forth between the hardware, you know, between the GPU memory and the main memory. So I think the the second stat we have that kind of explains that. So there you uh, technically uh, have to copy the the uh, decoded frames to to the GPU. So that, 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 that's why I think that takes up some more time here, simply because you have to, uh, uh, you have that memory transfer overhead. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm coming. Uh, so, uh, with your algorithm, you say that you decide if you have a transition, a uh, some change, if you, if your, if the difference uh, between the your pixel values uh, is above a certain threshold. Yes. But it looks that there you have a branch, mm -hmm. and from I, I just know a little bit of GP GPU, but I, I think you are not supposed to have any branch uh, so that your code actually runs really fast, right? Yes. How do you, how do you fix that? So. Uh, you don't run the entire algorithm on the GPU. Uh, basically, uh, OpenCV allows you to offload only the pixel computations on the GPU. So I'm just calculating the difference between two, pix uh, two matrices or two image frames on the GPU, and I get the result back, and the decision making happens on the, on the CPU. So the branching essentially, as you said, allows is, is, is on the CPU. That makes sense? Yep, OK, thank you. We still have plenty of time for more questions. Don't, Sorry, they don't you get a delay of two seconds when you do this for uh, a complete stream? Because uh, it takes two seconds to compute, for one. I, I'm sorry? Don't you get a delay of two seconds hmm. between each uh, computation? Because you do it take two seconds to compute for one, uh, st uh, two images. Two seconds to compute for two images. No, it, it's it's for a one-minute file, so it has around eighteen hundred frames, eighteen hundred images. All right, all right. Yeah. So two seconds is for eighteen hundred images. More questions? No. no. Hi. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I'm trying to wrap my head around how would I use, because I use OpenCV and TensorFlow to do similar things, but using convolutional style networks models in images. Okay. But I use OpenCV for the pixel computations, and when I want to use CUDA for like big, uh, big stuff, I use TensorFlow GPU, because mm. I only know Python. So I was wondering, it seems like you would like this type of approach would cut a lot of my time if I knew how to do that in Python. How would you, because this example that you showed, you C++. were doing C, right? Yes, C++. Yeah, because I imagine, yeah. obviously, yeah. if I knew C, I would do it in C. But do you know if there's a wrapper, if there's a way where I can make use of GPU computations with OpenCV in Python? Uh, I don't think so. I tried, and I couldn't get it. I would have loved to do it in Python, too. <laughs> But I couldn't get it working. I don't think it, it's possible to do it in Python. But y you're free to go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> Other questions? No? Thank you. Well, thank you, Sam.